just want to make sure uh, if, if you're out there, let us know. You can see us. I, you know, I'm uh, trying to watch on Facebook as well here. So here we go. I think we're set. Oh, there we are. Okay. Well, the hey. Hard delay. Hey, welcome yes. to the front row here at 40 Kennels Badass Breeder. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Julia. I am the owner of The Good Pup, which is an at-home grooming kit and education. I also am a breeder, and that's how Jeanette and I know each other. I breed golden doodles. You can hear my puppy. <laughs> I've got waiting for me. I have my AirPods in. Can you hear me good, Jeanette? That... I can hear fine, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if they connected or not. But yeah, so that's who I am. I bought my stuff. Thought I'd show you guys some tips and tricks. I thought we'd focus mainly on puppies and mama care since most of us are breeders. And I don't know if there's questions or I don't know. Yeah, Jeanette, both, you tell me. We'll, we'll open it up for people for sure if they have questions on, on uh, grooming. You're here to help us with that right there, honey. Thank you. Um, yeah, so th this is uh, Julia from the, the Good Dog. I know you said we met through the mentoring ship program. We, we yep. connect through a badass breeder, empowered badass breeder. And what I love is um, as a breeder, like I am, you continue to see that there was a need. There, there was a need for clients for help in grooming these doodles. We're sending them home and we're not professional groomers, right? And they're not professional Great. groomers. So trying Great. to figure out how to keep, especially our doodles, well-groomed and not getting matted and really helping um, your clients. So, I mean, you've really, I've, I've really watched you blossom and really step it up. And now you've created your own grooming kit for people that they get all of the necessary items that they need, tried and true. Plus you're pushing a ton of invaluable content free to people showing them, Hey, how do you cut the hair around their eyes? Hey, how do you deal with mats? How can you do this? And here's this tool. And this is how this works. And this is how you can do this. And Hey, let's desensitize. And here's a lick mat. You literally put a lick mat in your room. <laughs> <kit. laughs> yeah. Yeah. We needed something to keep our dogs busy. Oh, right. Totally. <laughs> around on social media where people are putting saran wrap around their head and putting peanut butter on their forehead yes i thought that was hilarious and something i would not want to do but i was like hey you know what i get it we, we'll do anything we get to a point know, for our dogs um, yeah that was a stretch for me to to do that so i saw you right. you look now we can replicate the same idea of keeping yeah the show us that right now while we're talking yeah about. okay so Hold on, I make sure you guys can like see. Um, okay, so I've set up just kind of like my counter space to show you what my kit is. So um, to backtrack, I started this as a breeder going, I know how to do these things. Like I'm a cosmetologist and I've been doing this for years. I ended up mentoring and learning how to groom under groomers and just taking so much online courses. And so I just realized, I've got to teach my families better than like at go home, like hurry, do this or whatever. So first, first it was just, I just need to create the education for my families. And then talking to other breeders, breeders were like, no, like we want this. And so, you know, that's where it started. And then it snowballed as I started looking into products to recommend to people. I really wasn't happy with the quality of products. I had been using my professional quality shears and products and, you know, um grooming products ordering in as well and a lot of what you'll see is like gimmicky bright green bright pink you know and then really just not this great quality and also like where do you get it so i started ordering myself off amazon from distributors and was like these suck like this is like nothing yeah like crap and yeah it was 30 dollars, but like I, I just want something that works and I don't want to keep ordering and ordering. So that's where I started just realizing I just need to create this like this. And, and the other thing was, even when I was ordering professional shears, the product wasn't there because, so it's interesting when you go to like anyone who's a cosmetologist or groomer knows that like, when you start, you start with short shears because the length of the shear makes a huge difference in how comfortable it is to control because most of us haven't held shears before or cut. And so if you're cutting with this really long shear, it's like, you're going to make more mistakes. You're going to have accidents. So that was one of my first steps was just like creating a short shear, then having it be professional grade and beautiful and have it be just honestly like affordable because to get a three set like this could be $400 in the grooming world. Easy. 
So anyway, so, okay. So first our like biggest things is we've got, and every scissor is for right or left-handed. You can use it. I can cut my finger stuck. Then you can, um, oh, sorry. What was that? I have a picture. I'm going to see if I can share it. It's everything in your bag real quick. So okay. Is, um, These are adjustable, like just try to make things really user friendly. So you can see right there, we've got three shears. So we've got our straight and this is our ultimate kit. So I created three different kits and each kit comes with our education access for free, but it builds. So this one's our education or our ultimate. So it comes with all of the education. I preface it that I don't teach you how to fully groom your dog at home. We don't go over body. We don't go over legs, but I show you how that you, cause we all can trim the ice. Not even can, we have to in between grooming appointments, especially for our, cause this isn't, I mean, I focus on doodles because that's what I have, but I have so many different breeds getting these, you know, multi poo, Shih Tzu, Yorkies. It works for any natural hair or real hair, but plus I'm having labs, golden retrievers, um, it's great products. It's just, do you really need a set of shears? I don't know, you know? So, so how it works for us. Oh, yeah. Can I use those on me? Yes. I literally, so as a cosmetologist, I actually prefer this over my like $400 set and you get three of them. So yeah. So you've got, so like Jeanette showed you guys the picture of everything. So you get a, sorry, is that puppy loud? <laughs> Here, <laughs> trying to get out you're all fine with that so then a she uh curved shear this is perfect for getting right in between here i might need to scrap that puppy out hold on it's very loud man we know hey, you want to come out hey, you stay here come here love you know what you can just roam my house okay so curved for that curved we use for a lot of other things like feet and then thinning shear so um Another thing about thinning shears is that some take off more hair, some take off less. Like this is the perfect balance of being able to take off enough hair to blend. But also if you keep going over the same spot a couple of times, you're going to remove the hair completely. So as you start working with your shears, that's important to know. Yeah. And like, I, I, I explain to people too, like when we take the straight scissors and you cut or you cut and you have these straight like it's fine here i think most of all but like when you're trying to trim especially a doodle just a little bit in between we're not saying we're, you're the groomer this is yeah. necessary needed in between so if we got like a little bit of whatever around here we just if you just take and blunt and blunt it kind of looks funny right so the yeah the thinning shears hold them really close so people don't know because i know because yes my hair sometimes look it's like, it just takes little, it know, takes off. Yes. Yeah, so you can see like it's, it's half of the hair basically. And so I ordered in, like I have boxes and boxes of shears, tried each one and, you know, found ones that, okay, I like this about this one. I like this about this one. And this was by far my favorite. And I have groomers and other breeders that have said, I choose these over my professional ones that I've ordered for $200. I and why, like it. And why someone would want those though, like why not just scissors is because then you can just take that around and it won't look so blunt and weird. It makes it look right. And not so. It's like the eraser. It like for, it's very forgiving. So even if you're like, well, this is the first time I've done this. I don't want to use a straight shear. This gives you the flexibility of trying it and going oh whoa okay like it's forgivable so you you make a mistake you fix it even if you use your straight shear you're curved so it is essential to have a thinning shear set especially like Jeanette saying so I teach so with each product so every kit comes with this set so I teach you a full doodle face ears neck you know I show you the correct way to hold it and how to shape and trim so you can watch those over and over again never goes away so these are, yes, I, I kind of dabbled in like, do we need a straight shear? Do we need a curved shear? Honestly, I just wanted you to have everything you needed. So, um, so we've got the three in here. Plus I give you a wide, strong metal tooth comb. So this is for brushing using on the face. Um, okay. Other products. So in the ultimate grooming kit you get our slicker brush, which also comes in the premium one. So this is the same. If any of you have Chris Christensen, this is literally the same quality. It's amazing. And it gets through. And if you've never used a slicker brush or used one of this quality, it will change 
your life with a grooming a dog when you're grooming them and just brushing and we need to brush our dogs every day so this will get deep um down through the coat but i always tell people do it on your hand your arm first see how soft or hard you're pushing don't do harder than that on your dog so i can go over that and show you on my dogs i also teach it in the course um the next thing is so first kit comes with this and a lick mat second kit comes in this our first kit actually now i just send them in this bag too but these are just these cute little tote bags that you can just throw everything in you can see it's all just in there so second kit is yeah this and what's inside of it is cheers brush so now this is the dematting comb so caution, this caution. is oh what was that caution caution yes so i say to only do it for like two minutes at a time if you're going to do it you're going like right on the skin but this is if you're starting to get a mat you don't use this if your dog has like a full-blown mat you got to just cut that sucker out teach you how to do that too and you can use your thinning shears you can use clippers but this is to work through maybe your dog's starting to get you know a little tangled this has kind of like little this isn't so sharp that i i'm like pushing my finger hard but it it's kind of got a serrated edge oh yeah here because oh see and you've got the same style i love this style it's easy to hold yes so put this is just because this has happened like if your thumb comes off of that it will cut you so really make sure that you're using that thumb guard yep <laughs> you've like i guess you've been cut before <laughs> we've all learned from these okay so this is like this is just basic we have to do these things with our dogs right we've got especially like our moms like they're where they're laying down a lot nursing, they are gonna get matted. These are tools we need. And so then, clients, yeah. For, and for clients, the, the areas that mat on the dogs, the chin because of the water, yeah. right? The ears because of the rubbing. Tell us other yep. places. Not just yes. Breeders. Oh yeah, armpits. I mean, I. it's interesting because I'm like, I didn't develop this for breeders, but breeders are loving this because this is awesome for in, you know, your grooming kit. But, um haunches especially like right on the back of the bum the top of the tail under and then um like inside legs those are your biggest spots to focus on and like maybe you even want to just go over this every day um sometimes some dogs get it really bad right here i don't know if it's from petting or i don't know what but sometimes i, I often see it right here and then the feet feet of course get little mats so like i said if your dog is already like a mat it's done for don't do this you're just gonna hurt your dog and the re like one of the other reasons i did this is our dogs are in pain if we don't take care of them like that's what people don't realize is and and it's i've been there like no fault of your own but like how are you supposed to know we have to brush our dogs every day and that's why you're gonna use you want to use a slicker brush and then you want to use your metal tooth comb and you want to line brush and go through everything if you do it every day it'll be fast if you don't We've all been there too. You either have to shave your dog or you've got to like really get in there and that's gonna cause your dog to have anxiety and stress and nothing fun. Well, hey baby. Shame, shame. We've all been there, the shame shave. We've all been there, it's really a bummer. Okay, so then, um, then here's my little fine tooth comb. This is for getting little goopers out of the eyes. You could use it for dingleberries on the bun. Honestly, it's awesome for, faces and puppies so like even just going in and so i find that like my bigger dog this is not as useful on but because i don't just like their face is bigger but i mean for right here but especially like our little smaller dogs this is like amazing and puppies Hi. guys i'm just gonna have to snuggle him now i know <laughs> um okay then i wanted to do nails so Every dog has to have their nails trimmed. And these are not only beautiful, but they work amazing. Better than any ones I've had. These are, all of these products are honestly, I've tested them with groomers and they're like, these are the best. So, so it has, a, so this is, so it has a little safety mechanism. So it just closes. If you want to open it, just click open. And then it has also a little, if you can see, it has a little spot that this is like a protector. So putting the dog's nails in, you're not going to push it too far. A lot of people had questions about this. We're all very anxious about our dogs and nail clipping. So 
my best tips are just start really little and don't make a big deal out of it. Like if your dog's anxious, just do one at it. Just do one. Like don't even focus on any other, but put them in a comfortable situation. You know, they're on. So I brought this up here to show you like a yoga mat or put them on a rug, but try to make them as comfortable as you can and try because what Jeanette understands and a lot of us understand is dogs are body readers. And if you go in being like, Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like they're going to go, it's not okay. Yeah. What the heck? So just try your hardest to like put on your game face and like, That's right. okay, done. If you're acting nervous because you're nervous because you, you had to cut the nails, all the dog sees is I'm nervous about this tool. And if you're nervous about this tool, they're like, shit, what's, what's wrong with this tool? Mom's nervous. Don't bring it near me. You're nervous. You keep it. I don't want it. Like we're literally totally. telling them the wrong damn thing. So you have to just be confident. Go in and cut the yes. nails. Good. It's fine. It's no big deal. And like you yep. said, small. people are afraid of cutting the quick and they do bleed and they bleed a lot, but it's not the end of the world. It happens, but. And not even until they're older, like puppies, if you cut a puppy's nail too short, it's just a tiny bit. And, and it's not like, maybe it hurt them a little bit, but they're not going to bleed out. Dogs. Yes. And so, and you'll do it once and go, whoa, okay. I'm going to be careful. And like, your dog's going to be fine and you're going to be fine. You're more traumatized by it than they are for sure. And there, I didn't bring the tool, but, or the stuff, but like Jeanette said, there's, and there's something called quick stop. It's like $3 and you just dip their thumb in and it stops it. So, oh, we can show you. oh, okay. Awesome. Oh yeah. And we put it in this, we put it in this, we can just, it's in a little container, quick stop. We put in this, we can just dip their toe right in it. Like super easy. So much easier. Yeah. Okay. So then because that also might make you nervous, I think it's really important to own a Dremel Dremels. Um, so I took the lid off. You can either just put your nail right in there, take the lid off and you just like, so this has, it, I chose this one because it starts low. So you could do it really little, goes higher and it's still really quiet. So one of the things that I found that dogs are scared about nails is the sound. So that's why I was saying like, just go quick. So this is awesome. It might be a better way to start with your puppies or your dogs. You know, I recommend if you do have a puppy, do both clip and then Dremel because you just want your dogs used to this. I'm going to plug us right now. Empowered Badass Breeders start dremeling and cutting nails when the puppies are very, very little. We do it once a week. So it's not, they yep. know you're getting a dog from an Empowered Badass Breeder. This, all this stuff is already being done. So yeah. no big deal. We cut nails and dremel every single week. And they just sit there like, all right, fine. Yep. Click, dremel, dremel. Right. We do both. Yep. We expose them to both. And you have to have that same idea taking your puppy home. It's no big deal. This has to happen. You will be compliant. If you let them fuss and then they get out of it, you just taught them a very, very valuable lesson. If I fight mom, I don't have to get my nails cut. And that is going to continue getting worse and worse. So from day one, you brush them, you have to continue brushing them. Even if they fuss about it or try to see if they can get out of it. And if you allow them, Guess what's going to happen? If you allow them to chew on the brush, guess what's going to happen? They think that's a game. Sorry, yep. go ahead. I no, no, I love what you just inserted. It's everything I would have said as well. Yep, I say, you know, start doing these things that, like Jeanette says, one week, two week, three week, week, you know. So any puppy from a badass breeder is going to be doing this for eight straight weeks. You just continue it. And your dog might fuss. Just like I always say, your dog's going to fuss when you put them in the crate. They're going to fuss when you put them on a walk. This is life, buddy. You're part of my family now. And I am the owner. Like you do not. And this is like one thing I say in the video is like, just do not coddle your dog. We love our dogs, but literally people will bring me their dog and they're like, oh, they won't sit like that for me. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, no, you are the boss. And like, go in and be like, I'm the boss. Yes, I got this. Turn that blow dryer on the first time and they get scared as humans, we think, oh, let's turn it off. I'm so sorry. Right now you just taught your dog a very valuable lesson. The, the air, the blow dryer is going to eat you. You should be scared. I will rescue you, you know, and that's the exact yeah. opposite of what we want to do. Matter of fact, you're fine. Yeah. It's going to be okay. You are going to sit here through this whole thing and this will get better. And then you do offer a lick mat. Um, show, show us one of those. for Yeah. Those Yes. It is like, it's such a funny thing that it's game changing. Like I really was like, this would be cute. Like, I just want to give it as a treat for everybody, but like using it because I like wasn't diligent about using lick mats myself. 
I always use a lick map now. Like my dogs, even that are good are like even better. It just, it's like, all right. It just starts them off. So especially if you have like, oh. Like if I don't know what the hell you're talking about, what is that and what do you do with what it? What is this? Okay, suction it to the ground, put peanut butter on it, put any kind of a nut butter, put cream cheese, put something that is not going to get eaten fast. Like cottage cheese is great for dogs, but they're gonna look that up in like 10 seconds. Yes. So you could freeze. Just depends on what kind of parent you are. I'm a grab and go. Let's do peanut butter. But if you're like, hey, I'm prepping, let's do peanut or let's do blueberries, smash them up and freeze them. Awesome. Just you want this has a text. So it has sections up to it. So it doesn't go anywhere. So you can put it in the bath. You can put it on the wall anywhere. But then it's textured so that it's like they've got to get around and lick and work on it. So you don't want to do this when you're trimming their face. You know, obviously, like that doesn't work. But when you're starting, even if it's like right before this, just giving them a positive experience and creating a. And it has something for them to look forward to. They should only get the lick mat when they're being groomed. So they look forward to it. There's only certain things I give my dog when they're in the kennel. So then they look forward to that. So the lick mat, put something on there to keep them busy, give them some brain work, keep them preoccupied, yeah. make it positive. Boom. Totally. Dogs are so smart. Like yesterday I groomed my dog. She runs straight up to the treat drawer. She knows she gets a very specific treat when she's done. You know what else they get? To snuggle on my bed. They don't get to snuggle on my bed any other time other than right after they've been bathed and dried. And they're like, all right, let's go snuggle. <laughs> they know. So this is the same thing. They're like, what? they're going to look for this and be excited about it. Okay. So the other thing we did is designed bags that everything fits in. So there's a spot for everything. This is big enough to carry more than just what comes in this grooming kit, which is everything you need, honestly. Um, but well, we can go over some other things, but then this is like my pride and joy. This is our suction leash. So this you suction to any flat smooth surface. So like if you have a textured floor, tavern teen, it's not going to work. It's got to be like, this is granite that's smooth and then it's not going anywhere. It is so strong. It's amazing. You can use this in the tub. You can use this on here. So to my next step is like my recommendation for grooming your dog is take them somewhere they haven't been. You don't have to, like, I have a grooming table. I didn't even get it out. I actually rarely get it out. I prefer to just do it on the kitchen counter and suction this on. I have a, so I'm kind of move some things over. I have this yeah, yoga mat. Oh, do please do. For people that can't see, or maybe watch us later on a oh. podcast. She has this black suction cup that sticks to the counter. It has like a leash connected to it. It's a, your safe keeper. So while you're grooming, your dog is secure. It's on the go wherever you want, as long as you have a smooth surface on the side wall or on the bottom, like on your counter. Yep. Showing now those that can't see her, she's pulling with all of her weight. Yeah. So Contain <laughs> dog safely up on the counter, not to worry about them wiggling too much. Of course, you cannot, disclaimer. You still cannot leave them unattended. They could hang themselves. Do you understand? Like you still can't leave them unattended. So there's your disclaimer. Thank you. <laughs> With the supervision, please. But now you've got your little safekeeper, your little loop around their neck. Uh, and this is great too, especially for your puppies to start training them because when they go to the groomer, that's exactly what's going to happen. They have to stand on something elevated. So do that. That's what I love about the kitchen counter. They're elevated. Number two, they're secure around the neck. You do that. Number three, you're using all of the tools that they are going to use as well. So we're setting our puppies up for success. This is why this at home grooming kit is amazing. All right, go ahead, Julie. Thank Sorry. you, Jeanette. No, no, right. So um, like Jeanette said, on the counter, you want them used to like one of the big things too is just desensitizing your dog to going to the groomer. Like our dogs are our babies. We love them. And I think it's actually kind of mean of us that like, I, and I did it too. Like, Hey, we're never going to do anything at home. And I was going to throw you in this new environment, new people, new things. Like what a horrible four hours, <laughs> but if they have done these things, then they're like, all right, I've gone through this before. Now it's someone new. That's a little stressful, but it's okay. So I wanted to show you with a puppy what I do, but one thing that I forgot to chat about is using the Dremel, not just for the nails, but like using a little bit of vibration on the puppy's body as you go. So come on, baby. 
Because she's replicating shears, right? She's replicating. Yeah, like the clippers. They're going to okay. use clippers on their body. Yeah. So let me just kind of go over. Is that okay if I do this right now? Is just go over like what I would do with a puppy. Um, you want to do this on their nails? See. Yes. What you're doing to those that cannot see. Yeah. From the time your puppy comes home, Rebel. do this as often. Yep. Yeah, vibrate. Yep. On, but everything is closed and she's literally just rubbing this dremel that's vibrating across the dog's face down their back desensitizing um, something that makes a little bit of sound a little bit movement on their body helping them yep. again desensitize to going to a groomer soon really i mean by 16 weeks puppies should have their very yep. first puppy cut it, a good groomer will take their time to do a lot of this desensitization the very first grooming appointment should be, hey, let's just get used to the table. Let's get used to the blow dryer. Let's get used to the, the kennels that you have to stay in. But if you've been doing this all along, I'm going to tell you now, Julia and I will be so proud when you come back and give us feedback that your groomer says, holy shit, <laughs> this puppy acts like they've been doing this their whole life. And we'd be like, yeah, no, they have. Yep, this exactly. All right, now she's so, going to calm down yep. her back. And Yes, you're going to get this kit and go, uh, like, so here's the thing about doodles, but any dog that's going to get matting is they don't get matting until they're six months, usually at the earliest they've got their puppy coat. Once their adult coat starts coming in between six and eight months, you better have gotten your dog used to this or they are going to hate it. So that's why you're doing like, no, you don't need to brush your dog. Like they, your puppy doesn't even need this, but you're getting them used to this texture. So I'm being so so it's happening. <laughs> soft <laughs> with this puppy. I am just so lightly brushing down the body. I mean, you can tell this puppy is totally used to this. <laughs> and <laughs> we've been doing it. I mean, I'm holding him up, not even on the surface. But if you really wanted to, you know, you'd put him on the counter and just go over. Okay, can you still hear me? Because this is where I was hoping my. Yeah, you. I, I think people haven't heard you hearing me, but we can hear you fine. <laughs> so that is so, that, so no you do not need to brush you don't need to but we want to brush our dogs our puppy um to get them used to that you don't need to because they're not matting and there's not an undercoat yet but yes you need to because the puppy needs to experience that desensitization desensitization now and not when they yeah. start matting they need to feel the pressure they need to feel how the slicker brush feels they need to feel how the the metal comb feels they need to yeah. understand like to get their nails done which we've already been doing so they don't need it in the same aspect of their coat needs that kind of grooming but they need it to be more successful in their life this is a lifelong deal these puppies will need to be doodles especially in other breeds there's many that have to be groomed for the rest of their life there's no way out of it and so making sure yep. that you set them up for success this really is a need for them emotionally and physically so that they can be desensitized so this is not a big deal Yep, totally, totally agree. Um, okay, so this is just for breeders. Like I sometimes, I'll use this brush. This is not in my kit, nothing. Just to give them good pressure, get them used to a brush. And, and so I do this. Brush as well. You can use a toothbrush, <laughs> the same. Yeah, yep, exactly. Um, then other thing is, this is not in my kit, but for little puppies, if you're worried, I like using just a human fingernail clipper because it's not your puppy's nails not going to go far. This is not going to show well. I'm not going to be able to give you guys a full demonstration on nail clipping. That's in, in my course. It's like they're professional videos, so they're close up. But I don't know if you can see, but we just want to take off the tip. So I can comfortably use my clippers, but if you, you know, if you're worried at first with your puppies, you could start with just human nail clippers and you just clip so same thing with under right where it yep. starts down that's where you clip right it's like exactly that it's like you can feel it like you would it just like naturally rest when you do it and then you clip right there um so i would go through you know do that then take your dremel turn it on really low smooth, <laughs> smooth. so you want to pull the hair back you don't want to dr dremel the hair. So you just kind of like push the nail out. This is kind of funny <laughs> positions for me. <laughs> okay. And then you're just getting right on the ends. 
So, like I said, this is not going to be very easy to do a demonstration on it. I can't teach you or show you on my camera in that situation. I'm sorry. But that's what I do with your puppies every week. Um, okay, then trimming the eyes. That's another question I get. This is in my video course, but I like to use my straight shear on puppies. Let's grab this little guy. And I'm just gonna use the very tip of it. So our shears are blunt, so it's not like you're gonna, it's not sharp, you're not gonna poke your puppy, but you can either put them down, see how they do. I actually, when puppies are this little, I like to just hold them up. That makes them a little uncomfortable. It might seem a little bit mean, but they're not gonna go anywhere and it's a safer. I already trim, I, I trim theirs every week, but you're just doing a little, like literally, it's like half an inch usually just going up. And I'm not touching right through here. So I'm just using my, or you can go if you can help. Nope. Just give a visual here. She's holding the puppy up with one hand and taking the scissors with the other. Can you put him down on the counter facing us and show people what you do if the puppy's a little more wiggly? You can kind of hold their nose. Hold their I'm nose. And we show, so the puppy's sitting there. She's going to kind of hold the nose. If you have okay, to put your there we go. Nose as well. Mm -hmm. So like, Here's a trick. You just kind of hold the bottom of their chin or yeah, like she said, hold this or use, you know, put your thumb on top. Hold the and hair out around the eyes first. So I know yours doesn't have it, but pull the hair yes. over the eyes. You want to push. Yes. I'm glad you said that because he doesn't have it right now, but you want to push this up and you're just kind of like brushing through, push it up. And I mean, I probably got something. Okay, can you see Jeanette kind of? <laughs> Let's see if I can get a light closer. He's right, the hair's covering their eyes. So go ahead, fan it all up over their eyes where it covers it, and then you can go in and just trim at an angle, yep. trim at an angle, and done. Boom. Yep. And this doodles are running around with hair over their eyes. It takes two seconds. Yep. Showed you how yep. easy it is. Just trim that. The other thing is like to you don't need to do it, but your puppy's having a hard time with this practice doing this with your scissors or just a comb like Good. you want to rest something so that they're used to i keep it and closed i just resisting a little bit and she's yep. not going to stop nope and i'm not going to coddle i'm not doing anything i'm just going eh, okay keep going <laughs> and it's okay so when your dog does this puppy doesn't have it but when they do start to get more through in between their eyes, that's where your thinning shears, you have to have these. So I have these designed to be blunt tip so that you can just go straight. Now I'm gonna move us. I am going to go straight. Right between the eyes and cut, it looks a little funny. Yep, we also do yep. don't go this way, go this way. <laughs> and you just tip cut into it. And this oh like, the reason we do this is yes, it gets in the way, but we want to shorten the snout. We want to make this puppy's face look shorter and that gives it that effect. And so then this puppy's hair is going to start growing longer. And at this point, then we're going to, and you can see some of my videos on my Instagram, just the good pup. And I kind of show you there's, there's like around. not even a minute long, but I try to show you guys because these are things that people just need to know. She's and not taking the scissors between the eyes vertic horizontally. Horizontally. No. Yeah. She's taking them. She's yes. taking the, 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 um, what are these called again? The shears? The, the thinning shear. The thinning shears and doing them yes. vertically. It looks funny. We would have never thought this is an amazing tip. Vertically and yep. cutting in the hair in between the eyes. So it's not this one solid straight cut. Like yeah, <laughs> right. And you don't wanna just do one spot. You're not just going right here. I mean, I you want to, you kind of start right here and move up. This puppy's so little, there's just, it's, it's like this big of a space. Yes, yeah. we don't really need it. But I just wanted to kind of show you that I, I, the videos I have, I have like an older puppy I show you, and then I have older dogs too. So a couple different examples of basically my blueprint of doing a doodle and their ears and different things. So, um, the other thing that we want on our puppies, this is like game changing for poop and different things getting stuck on their paws. So you want to trim your puppy's paw, the hair that is coming out of their paw. So 
pads of their paws. Those I can't see. We're talking about the very yes. bottom of their paw and the hair in between their black pads. Yes. Okay. And you are not digging in. Like the hair is there to protect the pad. We're just getting the hair on the outside of it. So you can do this with the pad. Yes. So you can do this with my straight shears or straight shears. Puppies are harder to do that with because they're wiggly. And of course you don't want to cut them, but that is for sure one route. I'm going to show you just with clippers um, because I think for puppies, this is it's going to feel more comfortable. So I have a wall creativa or something. This I like because it has different lengths without switching out this head. So for clippers, I have tried so many different ones. Obviously I have a very nice pair, but it is worth it. So I've gotten cheaper. You know, I, I started out getting cheaper ones, just trying to get by. Then you go, these actually don't work very well. And especially if you're really doing your dog's body, do not get anything under a hundred dollars. It will not work. These cut like butter, like super smooth. Cool. And the reason why yeah. is because they're, they're not good shears and then they pull the hair and now it freaking yeah. hurts. Now, now, yeah, thanks. Your dog's like, thanks mm. mom. Let's keep Yeah, and that's the butter. same thing so with, with so shears. yeah, <sighs> Jeanette's talking about the clippers on that, but shears like this, that's the exact same thing. If the, like our yeah. shears are, checked by a sharpening company here local in utah and they make sure they're sharp that they're not going to pull and hurt your dog's hair because that's what can happen so same thing with scissors like there is a risk to using crappy cheap scissors that might hurt your dog that you didn't know so i'm just going to show you a quick it might be better for me to show you on my bigger dog i don't know where we're at on time but i just wanted to show you we're just going to turn this on and this is where there you go using those She's taking the Mine. shears and just running it uh, on the bottom of the pad. So any hair coming past the pad of the foot is just getting sheared off. That way, poop yeah. is stuck, mud's not getting stuck. They get matted, they get stuck. Yeah. Stuck. Oh, Stab, dang all it. that makes such a mess. So she's not going in past the pad, just over it with the shears. Yeah. Um, so that we keep their pads clean. Okay. So um, I, I'm going to do two things right here, but I just wanted to show you one thing you can do is put your loop your arm like under. I, I'm at a weird angle because I'm trying to show you guys this, but like you put so I've sweeped. Yep. And so I could right now he's not moving. I can just use my scissors and clip. No problem. Like I can see there's some gunk in there because he's stepped in it. But if he didn't have all this hair, it really will help keep his feet cleaner. And he's moving. I'm not going anywhere. Sorry, this is a little loud. It's it's loose or something, but I'm just going to show you. Um, you're just going over. I like to get the hair. Can you see? Yes. Yep. Okay. She's and I'm just going cleaning. over the foot. Yeah, taking the shears and the scissors and cleaning okay. around. Okay. And he's no. He's not going to yeah. stop. That's important. No. Nope. He but, can say I don't like it, but he has to learn it doesn't matter, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. That's the reality. So she's going to yeah. do it again. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys down and Terry. So same thing, we can do this when pup talk about the bum. Okay, so we can do this with scissors. You don't want if you pull your dog or your puppy's tail, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna sit right down. So you want to this again, have an arm under. <laughs> this is kind of funny for me. I'm trying to find my angle. Okay, so he's keeping his tail up, so I'm okay. We just want to trim that really I like to keep the bum area short. This is a male, so I am just trimming all of this area, but you really want to get it as short as you can towards the bum hole because that's where the dingleberries are going to be. And on the tail, so, the tail. Mm -hmm. so this is right here is his bum hole. So I'm holding like a leg and his tail in one hand. And this is fine because he's so little. It's just hard when they, you know, it can be harder when they get a little bit bigger. And of course, this is uncomfortable for him, but I'm just. No one wants their bum trim, Rhea. No, right. Yeah. But this is going to, so I am just, and he's doing just fine. So I'm not worried that he's going to move while I'm cutting. And I'm not cutting when he's doing this huge wiggle thing. I wait till he stops and then I go again. So I'm just getting this as short as I can. And I want to get about on a puppy, like a finger, like a pinky finger around the whole thing Jenna. to shorten it. Does that make okay? So then I want to do the same thing above the tail. So you can see now 
his bum is clean and clear. You could continue it down. Um, also for boys, you want to get their little potty area. I like, I trimmed that already, his little yeah. weenie. The but the hair right on the edge of their, their privates and it's drippy and sticky and wet. So if you just keep yeah. it right Unlike discuss, I've, yep, I've seen disgusting dunk before. Okay, I'm just going to kind of try to hold them up and I'm going to show you what I would do with my clippers because this is going to get more hair and then you want to get about with clippers or scissors you want to get about an inch in front because that's their pea stream and so you want to just clean that up yep we don't want to take off too much just right there okay okay you did it good boy good boy and Yes, I'm giving some love and attention right now, but you do not want to do this the whole time or your dog is going to expect it and whine for it. Um, if you're going to use your clippers on the bum, I show this on another like reel on Instagram, but you're just going in the opposite direction of the bum. So I'm going to go out a little bit and out a little bit. I know groomers that like strictly just want to use shears yeah. um, and then some that just like to use clippers. So see, I'm just, I'm not going to create this weird big bald spot like that's gonna rest and look great you're not gonna notice it he has so yeah <laughs> there you go. He's got, what are you eating he's gonna, mister? he's gonna pull a Jeanette and cut himself yep yep okay <laughs> this eye goopers this little comb go right in there and get any little goopers that are in there and I would just, these are the, Real. that's this. like a flint comb or a lice comb. <laughs> yeah. Just so get right in there. The strands are so close together that you can get the little tiny eye boogers out and anything else in their coat. Right. Okay. So I feel like this is basis, basics of puppies. Um, and let me go grab, I, what's our time like today? Yeah, anytime. I'm going to, I'm going to share um, your Instagram right now too. So if you want to go I'm going to pop over. Okay, I'll grab a, I'm going to put this puppy back and grab a dog. Okay, let me see if I can, we're going to scroll over. Okay. Let's get my, come on. You can find uh, Julia on, look at, there's her uh, Instagram there called The Good Pup. And then it's also got the link where you can buy your own. Um, and this is where she's dropping all of her free content too. To con it's not just like, hey, here's a grooming bag, but um, she also shows you how to use the tools, how to make this uh, effective, how to really, really help your doodle, especially, or any dog that needs regular grooming, make this successful and fun and compliant. It's not just about, um, you know, forcing a dog to do something. It's about all of the love and respect that we do to build them into this so that they, they trust you and they need to understand you have to you know, hand, be, being handled by a groomer, by a vet, by children, by owners. And this is all part of that. So I think she's coming back. Here we go. Yes, okay, I'm back. Thank you so much. I just wanted to show you really quick a couple products I use. Um, just run up and down the stairs. I catch my breath. So Nature Specialties is a groomer quality shampoo and conditioner. Love this. I love their plum line. Um, this is their blueberry. It's, it's most, it's like their face wash. So it's tearless. So I like to use this on puppies. You can use it on their body too, just so you feel more comfortable. But um, then I use, so how shampoo works too, like professional is you dilute it. So it's like you only need a six, like one part shampoo to 16 part water. You know, it tells you the differences. So it's totally worth getting. Um, now this is the, the line I love is um, the Plumtastic. They have shampoo and conditioner. So if your dog isn't a, puppy or like if you this would be awesome even for a dog like if you just want a face wash you know there's just it's fun to play with and see but you will see a huge difference in their coat and how long it lasts in a professional let me shampoo just and conditioner you, Julia, real quick. yes I, I please can't do enough to this is again not an area you can go to the dollar store and pick up swab and bathe your dog like this is i've tried to i've tried the cheap dog shampoo at walmart the hertz or whatever it does not work. And especially if you have a doodle or a longer coated dog, you, this is something you cannot cut corners on. Get a high yeah. grade shampoo and conditioner. And a trick I learned early on is shampoo twice. Always yeah, shampoo for sure. and condition once you have to have that good conditioner to keep the coat soft and silky so you can blow dry and, and, and comb out. And it also helps maintain their coat until their next bath or grooming. 
it truly yeah. is, you guys. This is not something you can cut corners on. You need a high quality shampoo and conditioner, shampoo twice, condition and blow dry. Yep. And so you can't get these at Petco. You can't get them at PetSmart. A lot of um, grooming stores will sell it. I have it linked. Like, I don't even know what's linked on my good pup website, but on my breeders website, Bountiful Doodles, I have it linked. And Jeanette might have some of these things linked too, but at least I know that shampoo and conditioner is linked there. Um, okay. Microfiber towels. This is really going to soak up. These are rugs. Honestly, I just have these and use these. They work great. I just wanted a bigger one. Um, they're from Target. Okay. Then the other thing is just really quick on puppies. Don't use your high velocity dryer. Use just a little home blow dryer for your puppies. And I recommend bathing at least your puppy once a week. It's not that they need it. It's just to get them used to it. I've never seen a dog's coat or skin get dried out. I know that might be like a concern, but I haven't seen it. And a lot of groomers recommend that. So then dogs, I do like every two to three weeks. If I just had one dog, I'd do it every two weeks. Easy. I just have lots of dogs and I don't have the time. <laughs> I'm just spraying uh, conditioner, leave on conditioner in between and waiting for the groomer. Yes. So, y'all can be yes. like, oh, yeah, I'm bathed every two weeks. That's fine. Yes. Uh, and then yeah. the kind of life, I'm like, let's just spray some detangling clean conditioner. You're waiting yeah. for the groomer. I'll yeah, be honest, you're just I'm just going to admit right now, I don't enjoy or like any process of the bathing or grooming a dog. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. So, See, I and I, I love it because like my dogs are right in my face and they like love me and are so happy. And I like love to connect with them. I hate blow drying them, but it's satisfying. Okay. This is another question people asked with like getting their puppies ready to go home. Spray them with something that smells nice. This is the Henry brand. It's awesome. There's, this doesn't do anything for the coat other than smells really nice. So there's lots of different ones out there. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. Okay. I, you know, I don't know if we end in 10 minutes we end in 10 minutes do we want to open up to questions i have my mom right have here questions. yeah anybody have Come questions about grooming any of those tools anybody want to yeah, share I, i'm going to share and i can oh go ahead i was just um, gonna say i can get started on tips jim says same with our holly started light brushing and combing within first week she was home always tapped her nails like we do our 10-step handling Played with their paws to get her used to the sensation. Never had a bad comment from the groomer. Always what a good girl she was. Absolutely. So it really takes, you know, we say it takes a village to raise a good dog. And that's absolutely true. Start with an empowered badass breeder that understands the importance of desensitization through love and respect. Uh, we want not just compliant dogs, but dogs that love handling. And even if they don't love it, it's fine. But look at this dog on her counter. I mean, come right. on. This took, this took, this took. Love and respect and and making her feel safe and letting her know this is going to happen. So let's not yep. make it be hard. Let's have fun with this. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um <clears throat> was there a question that came in? Want me to start? I don't know. I I don't know if you want me to focus. I can tell you kind of like some Jeanette teaches a lot about like um mama care, but let me just show you on her, so how I'm brushing. So we wanna line brush our doodles or any dog with real hair. So what that means, let me see if I can kind of show you. <laughs> while, you're, while you're doing that, um, something we condition our moms to is getting really, really used to this type of handling. So a mom yep. that's in our breeding program does have to handle uh, different types of touch than a pet dog. So we work from the beginning of laying down, showing us your belly. We have to check every single teat all the time for mastitis, for cuts, for scratches, for mats. Mats will get around their teats. I mean, we are up in their business. When they're delivering, we are literally up in their business. So really conditioning our moms in a way so that they're at, they respect and trust are way different type of handling than a pet dog. So that is what Julia is talking about right now. This is a mama yep. up there. She's got some saggy boobs. She weans. Okay, yep. Uh, they go home. Yep. She's they're seven good. and a half weeks. So she's, she's still, good. she's holding on strong. <laughs> she's one of those. She's like, hey. So I'm I will keep doing this. Done, mom, I'm almost done. Yeah. yeah. Temperature checks, okay. mastitis checks, and grooming yep. hey, is incredibly here. difficult because think about a whole litter at her right now. And when they're crawling and pawing, they're matting. They mat yep. the puppies, mat the mama. This is daily, right. daily, daily, daily brushing. So I can feel, yeah. So, like for her, I can feel some, like especially right here. Um, 
that bad enough. I mean, they're tiny, but like you can just use your finger to pull them apart or I can get my little dematting tool. I would use your fingers and just kind of pull those apart and then I can brush through. If it was a big mat, I would just cut it out. Um, okay, so this is, especially for our mamas right here, here, we all know <laughs> this and their bum. This is where, and I mean, this is really normal for dogs. And this is where I will, um, shamelessly, I had to shave her tail. So I normally wrap their tails. She delivered puppies like five days early, right before I launched the good pup. And she just didn't get the care that I typically am really good at, like, you know, brushing through her tail. You're, you're, it's hard because these poor mamas are sensitive, you know, and you're like, but I, but if you follow Jeanette's bum, bum bath, bath I cannot talk, daily, then you're going to avoid this because when you do that, you wash it, get conditioner on it, and then you can brush through if you didn't, you know, wrap their tail. So you know, she's got the bottom of the tail a lot too. So even with the, just you I'm, shave, we'll shave that bottom strip too a lot. Yes eating so much and it's so yucky uh and you know yes. then you've got the placenta poop that comes later for them eating the placenta so we'll just go in it's there hard. and shave all that too it's okay yes. everybody is so okay. I'm shaving right just <laughs> right yep so um I I was gonna say so you saw me I brushed through then you want to go through and comb because that's when you're gonna get these little hairs that this is so here's one of the interesting so, thing about dogs and brushing. Sorry. Yes. No, me. you're just fine. Line brushing. Line line. Okay. So that's what I was doing when she was laying down. Let me show you again. So I'm just going to like create a line, literally a line and brush down, brush in each direction. So I'm holding the hair to keep her sturdy. And then I'm going to, I'm going to come on this side. So you guys can keep seeing. Now I'm going to go up. And after you've done that, I would brush through the whole coat before I bring a comb in. But does that make sense? I'm gonna go about an inch. Now I'm gonna do it again. And this is what's gonna keep them from matting because you're getting them when they start. Then you're gonna go through. Real quick, Julia, pick back up that slicker. And yes. just kind of brush over it. Like we think we're brushing. Not, don't line, just like someone's just kind of like oh. rubbing. Like, okay, see, oh, I'm brushing, I'm brushing my dog's brush. The problem is you're not going from, she's just getting the top of the coat. Yeah. Line brushing, you have to get down to the skin from the skin out. Otherwise, and this has happened to me. I was a new doodle uh, owner once. I'm like taking yep. my slicker, Julia, and I'm like, I'm brushing it on the outside. But, and they look pretty, right? But I wasn't yep. getting down to the skin. I wasn't line brushing. And yep. so they're still matting, and I'm brushing over the top of the mat, essentially. Right. Now, <laughs> now let me show you. Just did that. I'm going to go in the same spot with our comb, and I'm going to get more hair. So doodles do not shed. Well, okay, some do, right? But they don't shed. They're low maintenance. No, they're, <laughs> they're not low well maintenance. Yeah. They have to yes, lose okay. their hair just like But they on. have to lose it. Yes. And if you don't get it out, that's when it's just going to get stuck and that's going to cause matting. So now I'm going over that same spot and I'm still getting little hairs. They're coming out. So there are hairs kind of flying all around because I gave her a bath and um, she's, She's losing that hair. It still has to come out. So That's why just going. Poodles don't lose their hair either. But listen, every dog has to lose their hair just like you and I. The difference yep. with the poodle is when they actually lose their hair, it gets stuck in those tight little curls. And that's why they mat really, really easily. Yep. The hair just doesn't come out. So a doodle with a more straight coat, a lot like your yep. female hair, you will have hair around the house. So I always tell people like, look, I shed when I shower and blow dry, I have hair, but the poodle has to, but it usually gets stuck back in the coat and the doodle, you yep. could see hair around the house a little bit, you yep. know, um, collecting in areas. What do you prefer? Like ultimately it comes down to what do you prefer in maintaining and, and, and living with, you know, as far yep. as it goes. Yeah. Okay. These are super easy to get the hair out. Um, so this is again, where I say like, do it on your hands. How does it feel? Do not go harder than you would on your own when you're on your dog. So I am like very lightly, but I am effectively brushing through. So her coat is longer. I like <laughs> Jeanette said, it's easier to have your dog's coat shorter. Like an inch is the longest. Usually a groomer will do your dog's coat. Some carry like a one and a half inch, but this is probably two inches. So when they're shorter, it is easier 
to brush through, you know, there's less likelihood of matting, but, um, and it depends okay. what you enjoy. If you are like Julia and you enjoy, it's therapeutic to sit. I have clients too that love to sit yep. and brush their dogs. Like that's something they yep. enjoy. I love it. Their blood pressure. They keep their doodles long and gorgeous. Then there are people like me that are like, I don't love that. Like that stuff yeah. really brings me joy. I take them to the groomer, number four blade, keep them short. I'll see you in six weeks. Right? Yep. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So my goal here, you know, creating this course is luck is to be able to stretch those appointments out as well if you want to so so debbie i had her shorter but i like her longer so she doesn't need to go to the groomer she still needs all those things done she needs her nails clipped she needs her face trimmed um feet trimmed but tail all those things but she didn't actually need to see a groomer i can do everything else at home and that can save me I mean, it could save me thousands of dollars a year. Like we did a national survey before we launched and a couple of the things were just, how often do people take their dog to the groomer? How much does it cost? And most are paying at least a hundred dollars. You're lucky. You are absolutely outright lucky if you pay 60 to $80. Most are paying 80 to 140. Or more. That's without a tip. Yeah. Yep. And going every six weeks. So yes, you can. And this still, you have to do all these things in between the grooming appointments anyways. But if you wanted, you can skip, you could say, hey, can we do it every eight weeks instead? Or can we do it every three months? We do it every six months, you know? Just depends on how, like Jeanette said, what you want to do as a dog owner. Do you really want to brush the hair every day? I don't want it longer than this. <laughs> I want it, but I don't because I don't really, you know, I it's hard. So um, is there any questions or, I felt like I, got a lot of the things on the puppy yeah they want to know that will you send or attach links for the products to purchase so julia when we're done will you go back to this facebook live and just dump the links below in the comments so that yep. you can watch this uh some of her stuff is in there and of course yep. the whole kit comes as one you guys you know that that's the whole point you don't have to go buy all of these things that she has tried and true tested that yeah. she has spent countless amount of time money and energy um yeah ordering everything researching everything wanting better and you know that's just what i love about yep. you i have to say you, you're so a nice. you um you know saw such a great need you saw how frustrating it is how difficult it is for something as simple as grooming a dog and how yeah. much crap is on the market and then we're hurting the dog because they're not sharp they're not good quality and and, yeah. and then we're still trying to deal with learning how to groom in between and our dog's not liking it and then we're using crappy crap so yeah for sure good pup thank you it's the good pup dot co actually the good pup dot co i'll put some things in yeah i'll do that i'll get on the facebook and put it in um i so the last two things, if you guys are interested, um, we also sell this waterproof apron. If you use code badass breeder, I'll send a free apron with every order. Woo! So this, badass so when you give them a bath and um, for like clipping, they, you start to get hair on you. So we have these made, they're simple and easy to just throw into your tote. Um, and so I haven't made that code live. Let me get it, but you have to add the apron in to get it. So it's like, it's buy a kit, get an apron free. So put them both in, put, type in the code badass breeder and you'll get that for free. And, and badass breeder, not badass breeder. Yeah. Badass breeder. Badass breeder. Add yeah. Apron, add your um, grooming kit. And when you go to check out, the apron will be free. Yeah. Perfect. And feel free, like, I, I want to help you guys. If you have questions, feel free to send me a DM. You go through my, go through my feed of reels and Instagram, you know, on Instagram, I try to post education. I, I'm like, Jeanette, I want to empower you and you can do that. So, and I shared your Instagram so people can find you the good pup. So go yep. jump on, go follow her now on Instagram. Um, and she's constantly showing and sharing free content, really wanting, um, having a passion. Clearly. I love that you found something and this is your niche. Thank you. Stuff you love uh grooming and helping keep our dogs look beautiful so thank you thank for you. Love joining that. us today on the uh friday show thank you for being part of our badass breeder community being a part of love it. dogs out of the shelter truly disrupting the industry from the bottom up so that we can improve breeding welcome to the new standards i'm jeanette with 40 kennels we're not only healing hearts and changing lives to the power of a dog
but we are also changing grading from bad to badass. And look at all these amazing, incredible people I am taking along with this journey. And they are uh, branching off and doing their own things, finding yep. their own passion. And it is all revolves around what our dogs deserve. So welcome to the new yep. standard. Go buy her grooming kit now and go follow her. Thanks everybody. Have Thanks. a Friday. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks. See you guys. Thanks for joining.